This movie is an excerpt from a longer lesson and you can find out more evidence-based information about childbirth physiology and practice in my blog, podcast, books, courses, mailing list and membership. Please see the links in the description and subscribe to this channel to be notified of new content. The position of a head down baby in their mother's pelvis is defined by where their occiput is and the occiput is at the back and bottom of the skull. So an occiput anterior position is when the baby's occiput is in the front of the mother's pelvis, i.e. anterior. An occipital posterior position is when the baby's occiput is in the back of the mother's pelvis, i.e. the posterior. Of course, babies are rarely directly occipital anterior or occipital posterior because of the shape of the pelvis. They are either right occiput anterior or right occiput posterior or left occiput anterior or left occiput posterior. Now I'm going to use the terms OA occipital anterior or OP occipital posterior rather than ROP or LOP etc etc just to keep it simple, because it's really all about where the occiput is in relation to the front or back of the pelvis. And we'll start looking at an OP position in pregnancy. Babies move about during pregnancy, obviously, and may be OA and OP even late in pregnancy when they've settled into a head down position. When the baby is OP, the mother may feel more movements as the kicks and punches are towards her belly rather than her back. Her bump may be a different shape with the dip visible when she lies down. In labour, between 15 to 30% of babies start off in the OP position, but less than 5% will remain in this position at birth. Human babies need to rotate to navigate through their mother's pelvis. And the physiology of labour encourages rotation with strong contractions and the resistance of the pelvic muscles and the instinctive movements of the mother and baby. This happens regardless of whether the baby starts in an OA or an OP position. However, there are some differences in labour pattern with an OP position. Babies enter the pelvic brim mostly in a transverse position. So that's with their head sideways to their mother's pelvis. They are often in a more kind of oblique angle. So the with the occiput in the back corner of the pelvis or the forehead in the back corner of the pelvis. But the baby's head will turn to the side to some extent to come through the pelvis. They may do this before labour or during labour. Once they are in the brim, they can't rotate because the structure is transverse. Therefore, if they get into the brim in an OP position, they will stay like that until they descend further into the pelvic cavity where the turning space of the pelvis is. Now, once in that turning space, some babies do lots of turning. For example, a baby who enters OA may rotate to OP and back again. Some rotate 360 degrees, some 190 degrees. So you get the picture. There's a lot of turning that is possible once the baby gets into that part of the pelvis. Now, if they enter into that turning space and they're in an OP position, the shape of the mother's pelvis and her lower spine make it a bit more difficult for the baby to curl their upper back. And their occiput is not at the front, but instead it ends up at the back of the mother's pelvis. This changes the shape of the baby's head in relation to how it sits in the pelvic bowl and the cervix. Instead of the round shape of a well-flexed occiput, you get a more irregular shape of the top of the baby's head. And this changes two elements of birth physiology. Firstly, contraction pattern. So contractions are often irregular in strength and space between the contractions. They're kind of stoppy-starty sometimes with physiological plateaus. And the reason for this is theoretical rather than having any evidence to support it. It's often cited as being because the baby's head is not pressing on the cervix, therefore not stimulating the nerves of the cervix, triggering more oxytocin release. But there isn't any evidence for that, as women have regular contraction patterns without their baby's head pressing on the cervix in other situations and positions. So this may or may not be the reason for irregular contractions. However, the reason might also be to do with physiological adaptation that supports rotation. 
by providing space with less strong contractions interspersed with strong ones, thereby giving the baby space without a contracted uterus to flex and rotate rather than just ramming them with strong regular contractions further through the pelvis before being able to make the necessary changes they need to make. It's also very common for women to push during contractions with an OP baby as the occiput presses on the nerves in the back of the pelvis and this additional downward pressure against the tension of the pelvic bowl encourages rotation. There is also a variation in the shape of the cervix. So remember back to the transformation of the uterus and how the cervix is pulled upwards by the formation of the fundus. The shape of the cervix is determined by what is holding it open as it is pulled upwards. And in the case of an OP baby, they are likely to be higher up in the pelvis and not providing a neat round occiput to hold the cervix open in a circle. Instead, the cervix will appear to be closed and not opening. However, the fundus is still transforming away out of sight and out of touch. Labor is progressing. The cervix is waiting for the baby's head to move into it and hold it open. The outlet of the pelvis is wide in the anterior posterior diameter. So the baby will move through this part of the pelvis in a direct OA or OP position. So there are two potential outcomes for an OP baby once they're in that turning space of the pelvis. Rotation to an OA position, and this is the most common outcome. And once this happens, the baby is able to descend onto the cervix and stretch it open. If the fundus has finished forming, this may result in the cervix being stretched up over the baby's head very quickly and a quick shift into the emergence phase as the baby moves through the cervix and is pushed through the pelvis. Or the baby stays in an OP position. So this is called a persistent OP. It doesn't want to rotate or it can't rotate. And in this case, the baby stays in an OP position and moves through the pelvis and is born OP. 